South Africa's structural unemployment problems are steadily worsening. Our latest edition of the Macro Review provides an in-depth look at the causes of this crisis. CRA subscribers can look forward to the report, which will be released during the course of the week. In this video, Franz Crenier unpacks the causal factors driving up the unemployment rate. What are the risks? Before those, what, what explains the fact that South Africa has really got only half the number of people in jobs that it should have? We think the primary drivers, the causal factors, are policy-based in the sense of the following. The first is deterring investment. A policy broadly is hostile to investment. The announcement again this past Sunday of a renewed drive at expropriation uh, uh, through, through the new uh, bill, uh, an announcement made less than a week before the government's plans to announce its recovery strategy. It, it just raises red lights over whether South Africa is a safe destination for capital investment. Second uh, policy uh, question is the pricing of less skilled people out of the labor market. And that is uh, sectoral determinations. Uh, so setting uh, minimum wages, the horizontal application of bargaining council agreements that allows larger corporations to, to settle on higher wage agreements, making life very difficult for their smaller competitors and minimum wage laws beyond sectoral determinations. And more broadly, that dictate that a person to be employed has to earn X amount, regardless of the value that person might add uh, to the firm or the individual or the institution that, that might employ them. And so you get to a position where because of weak education, policy essentially says to society, look, this, 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 it's almost, it's, it's an access of half of young people. You, you actually cannot earn enough to be permitted under law to be employed and therefore you condemn those people to long-term unemployment. And then uh, related to that is, is deterring employment, particularly low-wage employment by stigmatizing the idea of it. The idea that a firm that employs someone for what society perceives or Twitter uh, perceive, perceives as a very low wage, that's politically unacceptable. It's politically incorrect. And firms very guarded and careful about their brands, uh, particularly in an era of social media activism, would rather not expose themselves to the negative publicity of paying low wages. So when it comes to South Africa, they pass on low wage jobs, which often means passing on jobs entirely. The risks that flow from these causal factors are four. The first for us, is that the extreme unemployment crisis is not going to be addressed at all because the requisite policy reforms are at odds with the ideological inflection of the government. So for example, to, to, to draw the investment, to create the growth, to, to, to make job creation possible, you really need to do away with the threat of expropriation entirely. To price poor people initially into work, you need to do away with minimum wage legislation entirely. And, and these remain policy holy cows. They're, 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 they're insulated by uh, layers of, of ideology. It's very difficult to overcome that ideology. So our first risk is that there will be no, in practice, no a policy response to address the problem. There'll be, there'll, be, there'll be gimmicks, there'll be youth employment schemes, there'll be all sorts of, 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 of other announcements, but ask the hard questions. How many people do these schemes intend to employ? And what is that as the share of the total unemployed? Flowing from that is that um, uh, South Africa does now face the prospect of enduring a decade with even lower levels of labor market absorption than was the case for the Zuma era. And our advice were pretty hard nosed, that cold clinical analysts, um, uh, hawkish uh, reputations, which we guard jealously because our purpose is to make sure that uh, nothing happens that in a society that in the society that takes our clients by surprise. We, we cut through the political correctness, we cut through uh, the pressures that are applied to non-independent institutions. We try and give you a hard, hard take on hard-edged, hard-nosed take on what happens in a society. So if you're planning strategy for a future South Africa, 
uh, one of the things to plan for is how's that strategy going to be impacted by the fact that approximately half the labor force will remain excluded for much of the next decade. And when you think about that, uh, the consequence of that is that that labor force will be very frustrated, very angry. It's already the case. We track a very sharp increases in protest action and uh, the political trends, some of which I introduced you to just the most basic ones in this briefing. Those frustrations will be channeled into the tide of, of violent and anarchist action, and that's, that's the protest uh, trend, and into populist policy rhetoric and action. Now, that's, that's populist policy is a function of politicians who, who wish to insulate themselves against the public criticism by saying, well, it's not, it's not our fault if we were only able to expropriation so relevant again since Sunday, if we could only change the constitution and expropriation uh, so magically we could erode the unemployment number in the country you apply only the most basic scrutiny and you realize that the one doesn't follow from the other but we expect more protest action we expect it to become more intense and we expect around the fringes of that for populist politicians to become louder and to begin implementing uh, some of their populist ideas however in the very we 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 in the fullness of time, and this is really our, our great interest, is, is how, do you how do we position institutions, individuals, even uh, families, to, to thrive in a future South Africa by having a very good sense of the long-term trajectory? In the fullness of time, should South Africa remain a free society in the main, populist distractions may fail. I almost wrote will fail when we wrote that paragraph and very low labor market absorption level you can only fool people for a time very low labor market absorption levels will underpin the prospects we think quite sound prospects for a change in government and uh, should that change occur it's one of the scenarios we run for our clients perhaps the primary driver behind that will be the fact that uh, this became a society in which despite the frustrations of so many millions of people, very little was done by its governing authorities to get them into the economy. And that frustration boiled over, it was a free society, you end up with a change in government. If you're new to us, the first time you've seen us in action, welcome. Um, it's, I hope we'll speak to you often and at length in, in the weeks and months and years ahead. A wide range of products and services, all the way from a WhatsApp alert service, a podcast I do, with Becky on a Monday morning, sits behind a paywall, flags all global and domestic risks and what you should make of them. A briefing such as this one, a podcast, a strategic intelligence, we provide information uh, to clients who are trying to make decisions on South Africa. You can approach us and say, I'm trying to do this or that, or should we invest in the following? And we'll give you our insight. You can ask us what, what well, what is actually in the expropriation legislation? Is it, is it as dangerous or as, 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 as uh, otherwise as the media might suggest? We'll, we'll let you know. And then we followed, as many of our clients have expanded into the rest of the world, we followed them. And everything now from the election in America to the uh, global economic recovery, very welcome to consult us on. Broadly, if you want to get the overarching picture on us and where we see both the world and South Africa going, and my colleagues and I published the rise or fall of South Africa at the peak of the lockdown. It is on Kindle for Amazon, it's in exclusive books. You're very welcome to have a look at that. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to gain access to our exclusive client briefings and reports, you can sign up for our one month free trial just follow the link in the description box below.